scientists finally discovered new alien life signs on Jupiter Moon. Hello and welcome back to Bite Me. Before we start, I would like you to hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. Since time immemorial, humans have wondered whether there is intelligent life elsewhere in the cosmos, as it is hard to conceive that we are alone in the fastest of the universe. However, for centuries, we have had only evidence that only the Earth supports life, but a groundbreaking discovery is about to change all of that. Scientists have finally discovered new signs of life on one of Jupiter's moons. Which of Jupiter's moons supports life? What type of life does it support and what evidence do scientists have? Join us as we dive into the exciting discovery of signs of life on Jupiter's moon. Jupiter is at its closest 365 million miles from the Earth and its furthest a whopping 601 million miles. Despite the massive distance, we have always been interested in what is going on around the planet. The largest of all the planets in the solar system, Jupiter, shines brightly in the sky despite its distance. Venus is the only planet constantly brighter than the gas giant, though at times Mars will give it a run for its money. Part of this has to do with its size and compositions, but the planet grows brighter and dimmer depending on its distance from Earth. How long will it take you to get to Jupiter? Provided you're interested enough to pay it a visit, the time it takes a spacecraft depends on a number of factors. The path of a craft often varies as it slingshot of planets, moons, and even the sun to gain accelerations while using less fuel. For example, the Galileo spacecraft launched in October 1989 and took just over six years to reach the gas giant, arriving in December 1995. But the craft took a very circuitous route, traveling a distance of 2.5 billion miles. It traveled around Venus, Earth, and the asteroid Gaspara to reach Jupiter. On the other hand, Voyager 1 took only two years to reach the gas giant. It launched on September 5, 1977, and made its closest approach on March 5, 1979. NASA achieved this by designing the Voyager missions to take advantage of an ideal layout of the outer planets. Another mission, the New Horizons, took a more direct path after its January 19, 2006 launch and had a flyby of Jupiter on February 28, 2007. On its way to Pluto, and other dwarf planets, the travel time to Jupiter was just over 13 months. Jupiter takes 11.86 Earth years to complete one orbit of the Sun as Earth travels around the Sun. We catch up with Jupiter once every 398.9 days, causing the gas giant to appear to travel backward in the night sky. Jupiter has a large collection of moons. NASA says Jupiter has 53 named moons, while others are awaiting official names combined scientists now think Jupiter has 79 moons. There are many interesting moons orbiting the planet, but the ones of most specific interest are the first four moons discovered beyond Earth, known as the Galilean satellites. The planet Jupiter's four largest moons are called the Galilean satellites after Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei, who first observed them in 1610. These largest moons, named Io Europa, Ginmet, and Callisto, are each a distinctive world. Io is the most volcanically active body in the solar system. Io's surface is covered by sulfur in different color forms as Io travels in its slightly elliptical orbit. Jupiter's immense gravity causes tides on the solid surface that rise 300 feet or 100 meters high on Io generating enough heat for volcanic activity and driving off any water. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar systems. In fact, it is larger than the planet Mercury. Ganymede is the only moon known to have its own internally generated magnetic field. Callisto's surface is extremely heavily cratered and ancient, a visible record of events from the early history of the solar system. However, the very few small craters on Callisto indicate a small degree of current surface activity. The fourth moon orbiting Jupiter is Europa, which you will hear more about this in this video. The search for life outside of Earth has taken many forms. Mars, our neighboring world, looks like it was once habitable, perhaps to Venus despite its current hellish conditions, but in recent years, scientists' gazes have been drawn elsewhere. What about the moons of Jupiter? But first, what evidence do scientists look for when searching for life on other planets? Dr. Anne Youngblood, a specialist in life living in extreme conditions, and Dr. Paul Kenrick, specialist on the early evolutions of life, explain what they are looking for of water. Almost all the processes that make up life on Earth can be broken down into chemical reactions and most of those reactions require a liquid to break down substances so they can move and interact freely. Liquid water is an essential requirement for life on Earth because it functions as a solvent, it is capable of dissolving substances and enabling key chemical reactions in animal, plants, and microbial cells. Carbon 
Many complex molecules are needed to perform the thousands of functions sustaining complex life. Carbon is a simple building block that organisms need to form organic compounds such as proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Carbon is one of the most abundant chemical elements on Earth and a major part of all living organisms. Therefore, one working hypothesis is that life on other planets might also be carbon-based. That's all for today. I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so that you never miss any amazing videos from us.